I read the Albrecht papers so you didn't have to and today we're going to go over effectively everything you need to know about soil balancing and the Albrecht approach and whether or not we actually use this in our regenerative consulting. So Albrecht was a professor at the University of Missouri in the 1930s and 40s I think and he really popularized the idea of a ideal set of ratios between the cations on acrylic colloids. So what this means is that in a in any soil we have clay. Clay has a negative charge as well as soil organic matter. There's negative charges on these um, particles called colloids. Now the ratio of these cations and these cations contain uh, consist of calcium, magnesium, hydrogen, potassium, sodium, and aluminium. Now there's a few others like iron, manganese, all that, but these are the macro or the main large ones. Orbrick and a lot of other researchers at that time thought that there's an ideal ratio of these cations on the clay particle for soil health as well as plant health and production. So that is effectively the Orbrick method and you can see here in this table the ideal ratio or percent of these cations on the clay collard. There's a very interesting idea of the Orbrick method. The big problem with the Orbrick method is that it's not quite scientifically proven. Uh, it's very interesting for such a big concept and massive claims that there's not great research on it. I'm a bit on the fence about it. I think um, a bit of a spoiler for the end. There's other things we can do which is more beneficial um, to spend money on rather than getting an ideal balance right. But I think there's still a little bit of merit in this practice. So again, you can see the ideal percent of the cations on the uh, on the collard here uh, for different soil types. So in a heavy clay, we effectively want a bit more calcium to stick the soil particles together. Now a big component of the Albrecht soil balancing uh, method is the cow mag ratio. And we've discussed that in another video. So we won't go into it too much here, but the cations do have a pretty important role in soil structure and soil aggregation. So a classic example is too much sodium in your soil. That's going to cause sodicity, which means your clay collards are going to disperse. So that's very evident in a lot of soils. And so anything greater than 6% sodium means you're going to have dispersive clays. So it's not great at all for soil health because that clay then seals up your pores in your soil and reduces infiltration. It also causes surface sealing, which then also reduces your infiltration. So on that there is limited research to suggest that changing any of this will have a significant impact on your crop yields. Now, it seems like there is an impact on soil health and you could, you can make the assumption that soil health leads to increase in production or, or yields, but in terms of directly relating this to production or saying if you have this ratio right, therefore you'll have uh, ideal production is, is not quite right. We can say that Getting this right, or especially the CalMag ratio, increases aggregation. So that's quite important, especially when we're at the extremes. So when we have too much sodium or we have too much magnesium in the soil. So it increases aggregation, also increases soil structure, therefore it increases infiltration. So the better our soil is structured, the better the infiltration. We also reduce surface sealing and anything like that. From what I've seen in the research, and we're starting to see a bit more in our differential SAP test, is that it affects the uh, cation uptake. Now there's a lot more than just these interactions that affect the cation uptake such as like boron and how that affects calcium but they definitely do have an impact on each other when it comes to uptake. So for example it's not here but ammonium, ammonium is a, a cation as well. It will suppress calcium uptake as well as magnesium and potassium. Too much potassium suppresses uh, calcium uptake so they all affect each other in the plant uptake because they have very similar uptake pathways. So sometimes you can see a correlation between the balance of these cations in your soil and how the plant takes them up, but it's not always the case and other minerals do impact that. Now another big one is hydrogen, too much hydrogen on the clay collard will increase the acidity of your soil and again sodium which increases the sodicity or surface sealing. So for an example, um, we will be going over how to actually balance a soil uh, you don't really see this too much and I'm going to give you a complete uh, calculation and explanation on how to do it so you can do it yourself. Again, we don't really follow this to a T. It's, it's interesting to give you a bit of a direction and to look out for any really bad excess signs like excess sodium uh, and way too much magnesium, but overall, oh, and, and way too much uh, hydrogen, but overall it's not something we 
actively manage for because there's better things to spend your money on. What we need is a good sword test with effective cation exchange capacity. Effective cation exchange capacity is the sum of all of these, not just your, your big four, but all of them. If you don't have effective cation exchange capacity, it's useless. Next, we want the base saturation. So base saturation is the amount of the base cations that make up the clay colloid. The base cations are calcium, magnesium, potassium, sodium. Hydrogen and aluminium are acidic cations, obviously because hydrogen is what causes acidity. Aluminium uh, dissolves in water and then it breaks apart the water and then releases the hydrogen. So that causes acidity because it increases the amount of hydrogen uh, in the soil solution. All of these together make up the base saturation. The base saturation is effectively how full or how big your CEC is. So currently it's 75% full. The rest of it you can consider as empty or hydrogen and aluminium. We don't want too much aluminium because that can cause toxicities. And likewise, hydrogen that's gonna cause acidity. So ideally, we want about 90% of that capacity full. We want a bit of hydrogen because we want it a little bit acidic, because uh, that's just where it's ideal for crop production. But overall, we want it more on that full side. So ideally, we want it at 91. Currently, say for this soil, it's 75. So there's room for us to add stuff without then knocking anything out, apart from the hydrogen. This is a sandy soil, by the way. Uh, which means the ideal ratio or the ideal percent of calcium in a soil is about 60. Magnesium is 20, potassium 8, sodium less than 3, doesn't really matter. Hydrogen, we want it around that 6, aluminium less than 3. So you can see here, calcium sitting at 40%, ideally we want it at 90. So in the balancing technique, we want to increase the amount of calcium in our soil. For magnesium, it's sitting at 25, ideally we want it at 20, which means we need to bring that down. Potassium kept the same, but if low, we'd want to add, say, potassium sulfate to bring it up. Sodium, I wouldn't really manage anything for unless it's high, in which case then we want to bring it down. Hydrogen, we want to bring that down massively. Ideally, one at six, this is at 24. This is definitely going to have a pH, say, below like 5.5. This is going to be quite acidic. And finally, aluminium, not that high, so not, not to worry about. So the first thing we want to do when balancing is to determine the difference in this. And so we want to add, we want to be able to add 20% calcium here, we want to remove 5% magnesium. And then for this one, we effectively want to reduce the hydrogen by 18%. The way we can do that is with the substitution of these cations. What happens is when we apply, say calcium, for example, if we apply a bunch of calcium to the soil solution, it exceeds the ability for other cations to then hang on to the clay colloid. So if we have a whole bunch of ca uh, calcium here, this will bully other cations off, like sodium, hydrogen, potassium, magnesium, and aluminium. It'll bully them off and then take their place. Now there is an order at which these get pushed off. At the weakest is uh, sodium. So sodium gets pushed off first, and then it goes to potassium, and then it goes to magnesium, and then it goes calcium. After that is hydrogen, and then hydrogen is relatively equal to aluminium. This is all relative to the charge that these have on the clay collar, so their, their uh, attractive force, their electrostatic force, uh, and the size of the cation. This means that if we apply calcium, it's more likely that it will knock off any of these than some of these other ones. It depends on a whole range of factors. For example, there's a lot more hydrogen, so it's going to knock off more hydrogen than, say, potassium initially. So it's one of those things where it's all in equilibrium with each other, uh, and ultimately it really depends on what else is in the soil solution. So applying a bit of calcium will tend to knock off some of these first, uh, and then slowly make its way up. It's likely that it'll knock uh, some, all of these off at the same time. So it'll, it'll take out some sodium, it'll take out some potassium, take out some magnesium, so all of them. So in a way, it's quite difficult to say, I want to get rid of 5% magnesium and keep 8% potassium because the potassium will likely get knocked off first. What this means is that we have to do a little bit over time and re-monitor every year and then make slow adjustments because you don't want to take off too much potassium because that's not good. We want we a want good amount of potassium. So our CEC is measured in centimoles and mole is just a number, uh, which is used in chemistry to denote how much of that element there is, and it's just a really big number, um, centimoles per kilo of soil. So this is effectively saying how many cations there are in a kilo of soil. And so if we want to then apply enough calcium to increase this amount 
by 20%, reduce this by five. So because we wanna reduce the hydrogen by 18% and magnesium by five, uh, what we could do to reduce that is supply calcium by 20%. So what we could do is we could supply lime to manage for this hydrogen and then potentially a bit of sulfur to manage for the magnesium here. And so the way to work this out is we want to convert the percent of uh, the centimoles per kilo, convert that into kilos uh, per hectare of what we want to add. Let's break this up into components and then we can solve for each. So let's say we want to solve for the hydrogen first. Solve for hydrogen, it means we need to add 18% calcium um, to, to dislodge that hydrogen. Now, we have a video out about addressing acidity. This doesn't address acidity because we're not actually neutralizing the hydrogen. We need to neutralize it with a hydroxide ion or a carbonate or bicarbonate. The only way to do that is with lime or the carbonate component of lime or root extradates. And so, although this will displace the hydrogen from the clay collard, it doesn't actually deal with this because it's still in soil solution. But anyways, if we were to use lime for this, so we use lime to address this, we could also use lime to adjust magnesium. It does take a lot longer. What we could use instead is gypsum for managing the magnesium. So to start off with, let's work out our liming rate. We want to apply enough lime, so the calcium increases by 18% here, which then therefore decreases this by 18%. So we want to add basically 18% calcium. So 18% of our CUC, so times that by six, that's going to equal 1.08 centimoles per kilo of calcium to add. So that, that tells us how much calcium to add to displace this hydrogen. What we want to do now is convert centimoles into uh, milligrams. And so in order to convert any of these into uh, milligrams per kilogram from centimoles per kilogram, you can find a table here of just the conversion rates. For calcium, it's uh, 200 milligrams per centimole. And so we have that many centimoles, we're going to times this by 200. That's going to equal 216 or milligrams of calcium per kilogram soil. Now what we want to do is convert this to an application rate. So if we're going to manage a hectare down to say 10 centimeters uh, with a bulk density of 1.4, effectively we can just times this by 1.4. And that's going to get our 304 kilos of calcium per hectare. Now that's not our liming rate, that's actually how much calcium to supply. So now we've got to divide this by the amount of calcium in lime, which is 40%. And that's gonna equal 756 kilos of pure lime per hectare. So that would be the liming rate um, of pure lime, by the way. So then you need to adjust that for impurities. So you might then divide that again by 95% to consider the neutralizing value. That would be an, uh, theoretically enough lime to displace the hydrogen. Might be a bit more because there's going to be a bit more hydrogen in the soil solution, which will then go back to uh, the colloid. And so you might need to address this again in three years time. That is just for the hydrogen. For magnesium, same calculation, but then we're going to convert it into gypsum rather than lime. So we're going to use 5% because we want to reduce this by 5%. Likewise, if sodium was a bit higher, we can use the same methodology for, for sodium. But anyways, 5%. So 5% of the cation exchange capacity is 0.3 centimoles per kilo. And then we're going to times that by our 200, which is centimoles per kilo uh, conversion to milligrams per kilo for calcium, which means the application rate of calcium is going to equal 60 milligrams per kilo of calcium as uh, gypsum. Now, again, we're going to convert this into kilos per hectare. So we're going to times that by 1.4 if we're going to manage to uh, 10 centimetres. And so if we're going to manage to, say, 15 centimetres because we want to go deeper or we're trying to manage the subsoil, um, it means that we just got to times that by a different uh, depth. So rather than times it by 1, it would be 1.5 times our bulk density of 1.4. Or d depending on your soil, 1.4 is a typical bulk density um, and it's a pretty good estimate. So the application rate of calcium per hectare will be 8.4, and then we could got to convert this into uh, gypsum. So with gypsum being 23% calcium, uh, the application rate of gypsum would be 365 kilos per hectare. So this basically is how you determine your application rates of products. 
for a soil uh, balancing technique. And so the end application rate is basically 756 kilos of lime and 365 kilos of gypsum applied to this paddock. Now, if, for example, we wanted to increase our magnesium as well as calcium, um, then we could apply dolomite and the same principles apply. As well as trying to decrease um, sodium, we can use gypsum for that. Uh, for potassium, we should use potassium sulfate rather than potassium chloride. The other thing is don't use lime in basic soil, so anything above a seven. You should really only use gypsum for that because uh, gypsum's quite soluble. Lime, you need acidity or hydrogen to break it down to release it. So for how we use this at AgriSol, uh, when working with clients to regenerate them to uh, regenerative agriculture, is that we actually don't really use this that much. It's important, I think, to know uh, the math and the science behind it, especially from a point of view where we say we have a, like a lot of magnesium and that is showing up in the sap and we can really see that in the soil structure. Then we might apply a bit of gypsum and a bit of lime, use these calculations to work it through. Likewise, if we have too much aluminium or too much sodium, uh, then we might do the same. Overall, we take a combination of this and uh, the minimum threshold numbers. So say you need a certain amount of um, calcium, so say a thousand parts per million of calcium in the soil, we might then look at um, applying that much to meet a minimum threshold rather than trying to achieve uh, a certain percentage of that uh, in our soil. So again, we don't really use this too much. I think if you're going to spend $70 a hectare on buying lime, you might as well spend $70 per hectare on a foliar application to increase the photosynthetic ability of the plant to then feed soil biology, increase your organic matter that way. And so I, I don't necessarily think this is wrong, but I think there's probably more and better things you can spend your money on um, than trying to achieve a certain balance. Directionally, I think it's, it's not a bad idea if you're doing practices that directionally push you towards this. But other than having too much sodium, too much hydrogen, too much aluminium in the soil, then I wouldn't really be trying to manage these unless you're actually deficient. So I'd love to know what you guys think. A lot of farmers do practice this, and it's a bit more nuanced, like uh, managing phosphorus and everything in the system. But generally, this is the biggest component of uh, the soil balancing technique or the Orbrick method. Anyways, let me know what you think and if you use it and whether or not you see results on your farm. And if transitioning to regenerative agriculture to improve soil health and plant health is something you'd like to do on your farm, then come speak to us. You can sit down for a free consult and we'll look at some ways you can get started. My name's Till. Cheers.